What connects French architect Paul Gourdet with the historical center of Almaty? Why is the Jarkent Mosque the single surviving work of Chinese architect on Pike? Where is Valikhanov's manor house city Mbiet located? Forgotten names and little known facts, recent history and national color, all this is in the Grand Buildings program. Today in our program, eclecticism and classicism in Uskamenegor's constructions of the beginning of the 20th century. Pattern red brick front elevations are pre-revolutionary buildings peculiarity of district cities. Architectural secrets of Ahmed by Tursino's House Museum. Expressive and sculpturesque construction in Art Nouveau style. Today, the House of National Cohesion is located here. And more than a century ago, it was the Uskamenegorsk Community Hall, one of the first public buildings in the city, built of stone or more precisely, of red brick. The idea of creating a community hall was attended by the mayor of Uskamenegorsk, Ores Fyodorovich Kostyurin, and his associates in order to ensure the leisure of the population and to ward off the townspeople from drinking establishments. Thus, it was supposed to arrange a large auditorium, a tea room, a library in the community hall. The issue of community hall's accessibility to all citizens was worked out in advance. Therefore, the prices for tickets and services could not hit the average citizen's pocket. We still have tickets of 1903 to 1904 in the museum. Performances that took place on the stage of the community hall could visit all sections of the population because tickets were available. They costed from 30 to 40 kopeiks to two and a half rubles. The community hall is a cultural and educational institution of the club type of pre-revolutionary Russia. On the territory of the Russian Empire, there were only a few hundred. And in small district towns, which was Uskamenegorsk at the end of the 19th century, this kind of cultural center was categorically lacking. It was the city of the townsfolk, as Galina Sherbik says in her book, Uskamenegorsk Recognition. Uskamenegorsk was distinguished by the development of trade, gold industry, but it was not notable for a great intelligence. There were many drinking establishments, as the townspeople say they were grouped in certain groups, ate, danced, hung out. That is, they had absolutely no intellectual, cultural enlightenment. For the provincial city, construction has become a grandiose event. The community hall was erected by the whole world. A special committee was set up to monitor the construction and giving campaign. It arranged charity evenings, masquerades, and held fairs. During such events, money was collected for the community hall. The donation collected 3,000 rubles. 7,000 rubles was allocated from public funds. In addition, city entrepreneurs responded very actively to this construction. For example, the owner of a brick factory, Nikolai Antonov, has allocated several thousand pieces of brick for construction. The economic department of the city allocated a free ticket, which allowed cutting down 1,461 tree trunks for a total of 1,500 rubles. <laughs> In 2017, the building celebrates its 115th anniversary. The first stone in its foundation was laid on April 28, 1900. The opening took place in 1902. Now this building is one of the oldest, not only in the east of the country, but throughout Kazakhstan. It is a monument of architecture, history, and culture of the city. The architecture of Uskamenagor city of this period is characterized by very similar motifs with similar objects of Western Siberian cities. Since Uskamenagor city then belonged to the Tomsk province, the decision to build the city was taken centrally.
Back in 1763 in Tsarist Russia, a special album of pattern facades was issued. It had to help beautifully build up the district towns where there were not enough qualified architects. The album recommendation was sent out to the provinces and was directly targeted to the cities of state significance, including city fortresses and city factories. Among such was Uskomenogorsk. The assumption that they use pattern facades in the community hall's design is indirectly confirmed by the fact that the working drawings for the construction of the community hall were made by Pyotr Stolbov. This is a public librarian, accountant of city government, who has no special education. In architectural terms, he made the community hall very similar to the architecture of pre-revolutionary Uskomenogorsk, which is there. But he decorated it with various turrets and pilasters. He made it very elegant and very beautiful. The main thing is that there were very large windows and a fairly spacious building. In general, it was a free architectural construction. Indeed, the county Uskomenogorsk has overtaken its regional center, located in Semipalatinsk in the span of construction. The rumor of a nationwide construction project in Uskomenogorsk reached the capital, St. Petersburg. A large construction campaign was written not only by Siberian, but also by central newspapers. Somewhere in the depths of the Rocky Mountains in a small unknown town, something happened, which many big Russian cities are vainly dreaming of. Historians and architects see the same time elements of modernity and eclecticism in the community hall building. Modernism speaks of the asymmetry of the layout, the round hall, and the arched windows. In the external appearance of the object, eclecticism can also be traced. Moreover, it is eclecticism which is significant for the West Siberian cities. Eclectic is a harmonious combination of different styles, and here we can see a bit of modernism, really separate elements, merchant or brick style. These are the elements of classicism, for example, which are the divisions of the facade itself by interfloor cornices. It is an allocation of the axis of facade's asymmetry. Community Hall got the status of a regional theater in 1939 when the region became the independent East Kazakhstan region. In June 1941, the theater building became mobilization center of all forces for victory in the Second World War. In July 1946, regional drama theater was given the name of Kazakh national composer Jambul. In 2000, a Kazakh troupe was formed in the theater. Later, the House of National Cohesion is located at the building of the Communality Hall. Local historian Irina Kolomchina considers that round and arched windows, turrets, book ending the roof's corners, attracted close attention both a hundred years ago and now. It was an abundance of architectural details. Moreover, it is remarkable that it has been so far preserved in such a primordial form. It is more beautiful, it is unusual. We have no such buildings anywhere nearby. In our city, it is the only beautiful thing. building of the former Marinsky Women's College in Uskomenogorsk is another architectural monument of the early 20th century. Today, the old building, made in the traditions of Russian classicism, stands out predominantly in the architectural and artistic ensemble of the modern city. The building of Marinsky College is proportionally much verified, which relates us to the traditions of classicism. Arch windows are decorated with corbel arch. These are the elements of Russian style. As for the elements of Russian style, we can include dentals, so-called crunches, under the cornice of the building. The history of Marinsky College and Uskomenogorsk began long before its opening. At the end of the 19th century, in a city with a population of almost 9,000 people, there was a three-class city school for young men. There were no such institutions for the girls. The issue of allocation for its construction from the state treasury was considered at the highest level, the state council. Only on July 1, 1901, the decision to establish the Marinsky Women's College was taken.
They were waiting for the Marinsky College for a very long time. At that time, there was already a parish school for girls. But it was the initial stage of education for girls. And the girls had to be sent to Semipalatinsk, Omsk or Tomsk. And it was very uncomfortable. Until 1862, Marinsky College were called female gymnasiums. The first of them were open in St. Petersburg in 1858. There were girls aged 9 to 13 years. The colleges were part of charitable education system. By 1864, there were more than 100 such educational institutions. Why is it called as Marinsky College? In honor of the widowed widow of Paul, the first king then, Maria Fyodorovna. It was a queen who opened a network of such institutions for people who could not attend a private school or get a better quality education. It was a network of charitable institutions. In particular, they included orphanages and educational institutions. The building of Marinsky College in Uskamenogorsk was erected in 1901. The opening was in 1902. Merchant and philanthropist Georgi Mikhailovich Zanin undertook almost the entire amount of construction financing. Pattern facades introduced in the provincial cities of the Russian Empire could not dominate the Marinsky College's building, architects say. Most of the district cities were built up by this example. In general, the building is symmetrical enough. Its forms are practical. In the building plan, it has a rectangular body, G-shaped shape. In addition, this building is located at the corner of the intersection of streets, and this could not but be reflected in its architectural solution. The building from the corner is bookended with an intricate attic. Similar attics and architecture of this style is extremely small. It is light enough and plain. After the revolution, the work of all women's schools was stopped. Educational institutions, a hospital, and even a detachment of the Cheka, which stands for the All-Russian Special Commission for Combating Counter-Revolution, sabotage and speculation, were located in the building of Uskomenogorsk Marian. There was a university and an assembly hall for malnourished children from the Volga region at one time. And again, a school, the hospital, a lot of stuff happened in the history of this building. But this is wonderful that it has survived until now, that it stands, pleases us with its appearance and serves people. In the building's history, there were absolutely unfavorable periods. When constructing the Victory Avenue, the building was even supposed to be demolished. Old-timers remember it without doors, roofs, and window blocks. At that moment, decorative turrets along the perimeter of the roof were lost. The part of the pediment collapsed. However, the hard times have passed. Moreover, today, as before, it pleases the eyes of residents and visitors of the city. These unique moments have been preserved. These porticos. These semi-oval windows, the very porch. Look at the pictures of the 20th century, and now it has not changed at all. It is almost the same, despite its very uneasy fate. A new era for the building began in 1984, when the Ethnographic Museum was located in the walls of the Marinsky College. During the year, renovation was carried out here. They renovated the facades, covering them with marble chips. On the side of the back entrance, another room was added. This building has two entrances. We are at the central entrance, which is framed by rustic pilasters. Pilasters are the bow of the wall, and above the entrance, you can see an intricate pediment. Architectural decorations make the building more complete and harmonious. The facade is divided into several pilasters. Here is an intricate pediment, dentals, crackers, corbel arches. All this gives the building a unique look and unrivaled color. 
The building's cornice is decorated with crackers. Crackers are decorative rectangular corbels. The windows of this building are arched and decorated with corbel arches. Corbel arch is such a decorative semicircular element which resembles in its form the Russian female headwear. Over 115 years of history, the building of the former Marinsky College has gone through complex stages. However, neither reconstruction nor reprofiling did not break the spirit of the structure. Today, there is an East Kazakhstan Architectural, Ethnographic and Natural Landscape Reserve Museum in the Marinsky College's building. It is of great value for the whole of Kazakhstan. Old buildings have a certain spirit. It is called a sacred place. This fully applies to our building. These walls are as powerful as they do not build. These rooms, these halls, for us, this is the second home. In Almaty, at the end of the 19th and early 20th centuries, brick was not the main building material. Seismic activity in the region dictated other approaches. Buildings and structures were erected of wood. Especially among the builders, the Tianshan spruce was valued. L'architecture est en bois. Après l'intérieur, je ne sais pas exactement. Inside this building is a sample of wooden architecture, but outside it does not look made of wood. It seems that the house was altered after some events. I cannot say exactly what kind. What is interesting is that this type of architecture can be found on almost every street. It's unusual. Ici, dans toutes les rues, c'est assez atypique. In the center of Almaty, this house draws the eyes of the passers-by. There are not many such buildings in this historical center today. Each has its own history and, of course, of architectural mystery. Jeremy Cheneau is a tourist from France, one of those travelers whom the structure did not leave indifferent. The young man is interested in architecture and could not sidestep the building. Particularly, he was attracted by the eccentricity and lack of similarity with the rest of the city development. I think that this type of architecture is quite typical for the old countries belonging to the former Russian Empire. And Kazakhstan is such a country to the same extent as Kyrgyzstan and the Baltic countries, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. Last year I was in these countries and I find a lot of similarities in architecture. Both of these types of buildings were built here and this is interesting because this is wooden architecture, which is still a rather important type of building in these countries. The building was erected in the early 20th century. The year of construction and the author of the project, unfortunately, are unknown. A wooden, one-and-a-half-story house with a basement on a brick foundation. For today, only the residential part has been restored. The total area of the building is 160 square meters. Next to the house, there is a plot. It is located on 11 acres. There now, if you notice, spruce trees have grown up, which you do not see often in Almaty. The trees were planted in 1993 when they organized the House Museum of Baitursinov and carried out repair works for five years. Research officer of Almaty Museum, Almat Nurgaliev, notes that all buildings of those times have identical decorations. In such buildings dating back to the 19th century, one feature is noticeable. That is, the window frames and facades are made of wood, which is built from one architectural part of the late 19th and early 20th century. Many similar buildings in Almaty have the same windows made of wood and have survived to this day.
Local historians say that the House Museum of Ahmed Baitursinov was originally the estate of merchant Sava Fyodorovich Zubov. The merchant's name is associated with a large-scale construction of a trading area in the Kuchigur district. Today it is the Nikolsky Market. Not far from the bazaar and the church, Zubov built this mansion for himself and his family. During the time of Verni and Almaty lived many merchants and traders. Among these merchants was a citizen, Sava Fyodorovich Zubov. This house belonged to him. Then in 1930 to 1934, the famous Kazakh scientist and enlightener Ahmed Baitursinov moved here with his family and lived here for the rest of his life. Another hypothesis is held by the director of the House Museum, Rahan Imakhanbetova, who places in question the House's affiliation with the merchant Zubov and the merchant class of Verni on the whole. In her opinion, the estate was built especially for one of the priests of the St. Nicholas Church located nearby. The history of this house is very deep. It was built at a time when the city of Almaty was the fortress of Verni. But if you rely on the text of people who have studied the history of the house, the year of its construction is unknown. Despite this, there is a point of view that this house was built especially for the churchman, which is nearby. Ayman Baisalava, a granddaughter of Ahmed Baitursinov, is on a tour of her home. Here pass the first years of her life, and these walls keep the story of her family. I was a year and nine months old in 1937. And he nursed me here. He put me on his shoulders. I was a year and eight months old. I do not remember it. My mother told me about it. He played here with me. There was a big house. Here until the 90s, there was no registration. Anyone came and lived here. And downstairs, there was a cellar. And here, there is a basement, but it is not working. There was a kitchen. Everybody was cooking there, but mostly our family. <laughs> Since 1988, the House Museum of Ahmed Baitursinov is located in this building. A prominent state and public figure lived here from 1934 to 1936, up to his arrest. The House Museum of Ahmed Baitursina was opened in 1988. There are four rooms in the house. Three of them, the former dining room, study and children's room, are occupied by exhibition halls. The exhibits themselves are few, mostly these are rare archival documents, photographs and manuscripts of scientific works. A printing machine on which a message to Lenin was written, a suitcase and a coffer were by nature of personal belongings. Each thing preserved to this day has its own story. When Baitursena was shot as an enemy of the people, his relatives also were in disgrace. Only after he was acquitted and he was given a place in history when this museum began to work, only in 2005, they handed over this printing machine. It was given to us by Samad Bektimisov. He is a descendant along the line of the elder brother of Ahmed Baitursinov, Kali. And the coffer behind us was sold by Ahmed's wife, Badri Sifa, to her neighbor for 50 psalms in order to go for her husband. An interesting fact was found in the site and improvement of Ahmed Baitursinov's house museum. A Saka burial mound with early and late graves was found under the building. In 1998, the works began on the restoration of this house to the 125th anniversary of Baitursinov. At that time, the team of Karl Baipakov and the Institute of History and Ethnography had found the human remains under the third room. Kiev 
keepers of museum values dream to restore the house relic, restore the appearance that was during the life of the famous state and public figure. The plan is to be realized by the 150th anniversary of the birth of Ahmed by Tursinov by 2022. According to historians, this should attract even more tourists to the museum.